Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode five of Connection Squared. I am Hannah Chapman, founder of X Squared Wealth Planning, where I help business owners build wealth for their business and their personal life with joy and with ease. And in this series, I bring on other entrepreneurs that are helping people just like my clients to build wealth in other ways. So our, you know, the client is right in the middle and we have all of these beautiful connections that we make with other business owners to really help expand that influence and impact. And today I am so excited to be talking to Lady Crystal Richardson. Lady, seriously, um, she'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, she is a global wealth innovation strategist and the founder and CEO of Life Innovation Global and build that biz. And I'm gonna plug just a couple of other things that we're gonna talk about. She is also creative and data-driven. So we have that in common and I cannot wait to talk about the way that your creativity informs all of the scientific innovative research that you do as well. So Lady Crystal, please introduce yourself and just, yeah, give us, give us the rundown. Give you the rundown. Okay, yeah. Great. Well, thank you, <laughs> Hannah, so much for having me on episode five. This is just really amazing, and and I just I just love you. We've only we've only talked just a few times, and it's been a really really divine connection, I'll say. Mm -hmm. So my name is Lady Crystal Richardson, as she mentioned. I I have been knighted as a dame with the the Royal House of Cappadocia, and so that was a great honor that I had earlier this year, and it is something that. A number of us do that that have have reached a, a certain level of success that we are being honored uh, related to that and and from a th philanthropic perspective and so there's a lot that we will be doing helping helping women and children and and a number of initiatives that will be coming forth uh, over these next several years that we've outlined so that was a great honor and i and i really appreciate that but i am the founder and ceo of life innovation global and build that biz. I help entrepreneurs and businesses go from creativity to cash flow. And so I always go like this: creativity to cash flow. And I have I have people do that in the conferences. And they're <laughs> like, oh yeah, you know, creativity to cash flow, because it's something that, that helps solidify it for them to remember. And I don't want them to just remember it but also have where they manifest it in their lives. And so whether it is on the, the analytical uh, side <laughs> that Hannah mentioned or from the creative side, I do left brain, right brain things each and every day. And there is a saying that I have that is creativity breeds creativity. So it doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm cooking and, and making my own recipe or if I'm sewing or if I'm working on software validation for something for genetic research or working with a doctor on a skin cancer diagnosis device, it is where creativity comes into play. And so I love, love, love media. I'm a media geek. And so I do help people with their, their marketing and media and have where we do Emerge uh, Academy where they come and learn how to public speak and, and write and a whole bunch of other things related to that. But it's all focused on one thing innovation, because I feel that we all have innovation inside of us, we all have creativity, and we probably all have a patent or two inside of us. So being a global wealth innovation strategist, all that means is that I help people to really seriously strategize how they can take advantage of all of the elements of cash flow that they can get out of just even one idea. And so I don't want to go too far in, into that. I'm supposed to just be introducing myself, yeah. but just one idea, we go into what's called element 10, because everyone should have and can have 10 sustainable and substantial streams of income from just one idea. And so back to introducing myself, I guess I'm from Flint, Michigan. I'm currently residing in Arizona. And my, my parents, you know, when I was little, they, they sent me to kindergarten with my little plastic briefcase and said, you can be anything you want to be, and you can do anything that you want to do. But when I went into kindergarten, 
I was met with, with bullying because I was always raising my hand because I actually did have the answers. It's not that I thought that I did, I actually did. There was a few of us, you know, as they called it back then, smarty pants, you know, and, and I was really cute. I had my little braids going down and my little outfits and everything. And so it, it, it caused some bullying and that continued to go on the junior high school, uh, high school and on into adulthood. And so I'll get into some of that a little bit later on how how that really made me who I am today. But what I will say is that it made me dig into my studies, dig into my creativity with dance and music. And I was able to excel in a lot of those areas. Basically anything and everything I laid my hand on, I was able to do with excellence, which caused more bullying, but it, it wasn't until age 50. I'm about to be 58 this year in another month and a half. And it wasn't until age 50 that I decided to say two words, which were no more. Mm -hmm. And when I said that, there was a lot more that opened up to me. And I'll, I'll kind of get into all the things I've done globally prior to age 50 and then even after that. But having that global mindset and having that no more has given me so much power to be able to manifest, manifest global wealth for lots of other people and businesses. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. So like, I, it just spoke to my heart so strongly because I relate so much, right? Being, being the little girl with all the ideas and all the answers, right? And like, right. not, yeah, not, not being wrong. Like I, I so, so similar. I just relate so much to that. And then feeling that feeling of pulling back in. Right. But always still like, Oh no, I want to shine. Like that, that piece of me always wanted to shine, even when right. it was like kind of being told to cover up. Um, oh, and I, yeah, I, we can even dive into that right now if you want, because that getting to that place of no more, like that's, oh gosh, I feel that so strongly for myself right now too, like getting into that space where, no, I'm going to let my light shine all the time. Like that's the place we have to get to in order to release that creativity fully and let it completely flourish. Um, yeah. So what, ugh, keep talking, tell me, tell me more <laughs> about that. How, <laughs> how did you get there and how have you seen that just, you know, change things. And like you said, like becoming a global wealth strategist going from, I'm doing it for myself to I'm doing it for the globe. Like, tell me about mm -hmm. that journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for, for the question. It's a really great question. It is something that, that is like a heart, heart pull kind of thing, because there's so many people, they may not have gone through bullying. They may have gone through sexual harassment, you know, as women, there may have been some things that have happened with maybe, uh, unfair practices, you know, that they may have thought about in the workplace. And so being able to share these stories to let women know that they're not alone and men too, but, you know, to let women know that they're not alone is, is really a part of my, my, my passion right now. And so prior to age 50, yeah, I, I've been to, uh, I'm, I've been to about 35 different countries or so. And I think most of those were before age 50 or maybe I went to a couple after that. I kind of lose track of time now, <laughs> but, but yes, whether it was with the doing genetic research, whether it was speaking engagements, doing media, or also the, the various missions trips that we have done and, and organized, taking medical devices and taking various things over to all these different countries and, and teaching dance and and preaching and, and having where we do medical missions, like all of these different things, uh, people, when they hear and started hearing after age 50 that I had been bullied, they're like taken aback. They're like, what, wait, you Crystal bullied? You know, you're always, you've always come off as so strong and you've done this and that and blah, 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 blah. But it was just a specific personality type that I allowed to get to me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so, being able to realize that and go on that two and a half year journey from, from 50 to 52 and a half, almost 53, it, it took me a while to really dig down, look back at my childhood, look at you know my, my young adulthood and all of the different things that had gone on to be able to understand, okay, this is the personality type. 
these are the triggers and I'm not going to allow that anymore. So in business, whether it's for myself or things that I had already done globally, it wasn't that I hadn't done things globally before. It's just that I was able to now look at it and, and do it and manifest it in a, in, a, in a different way, a more concrete way, because I really, really believe that we all should understand more from a psychological soci and sociology perspective about personality types and about behavior. And because that also is something that can help you understand your wealth profile and your wealth index and various things that I have that I work with people on. And so once you understand your personality and your behaviors, and then you can see what's going on with other people when you think that you might want to, to go into business with them or have them as a business partner or as a client or as a mentor, all these different levels that we have in our relationships, then that helps us more to be able to, to, do, to do limitless things in our life. And so that's what happened between that 50 and 52 and a half. I went even deeper into the, the people part and, and just understanding to uh, relate it to all the different things that, that affect us mentally, how that can also affect our wealth index. And so I have something that I call a freedom formula as well as a wealth formula. And it's just amazing and, and fun and great working with clients every single day and every single night <laughs> and every single weekend, right. <laughs> uh, helping them to discover that. It's just like the whole world is just a, a complete playground because I'm able to help people in a specific way that maybe sometimes other people, if you're just thinking of coaching, traditional coaching, it, it's not the same. And it, part of that is because of the left brain, right brain uh, thing that, that I talk about a lot. Mm, yes. Yes. And so let's left, left brain, right brain, we're going to put a pin there because we're going to come right back to that. But I wanted to um, just expand on that, that personality fit. And I think what you, what you got to um, in that piece there was yes, business partnerships, yes. Um, you know, client relationships, but the, the way that you interact with other people is extremely important. And when you are a small business owner in particular, like, for example, I work with a lot of service-based businesses, so but people that work with other people. And when you are working with people who light you up, when you can be in flow, when it just like the value that you can give everything that comes out, all the innovation that just flows out of you can go where it needs to go more easily versus, you know, when you're with that personality type that, that you clash with for whatever, right. reason, right. It's like, it's like, you're like, I, I can't push my value to them. It's like, it's like, it's an effort and it's not flowing and you're like, why isn't this working? Right. And a right. lot of it is just that, you know, we're not the right fit for every single person. And right. so if you find yourself like pushing, I have to push my value onto this person, you know, let's take a step back and <laughs> see right. where it flows more easily. Um, yeah. And, and there's, there's that saying of go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, that, that really is key in talking about clients and talking about wealth and, and knowing your worth too, because you and I, when we talked before, we talked a little bit about worth and I, I had, uh, they, they, they ended up being a client, but you know, they, they wanted to take me to lunch and, uh, there were, there were two gentlemen, I think it was the CFO and the CEO of a company and we're, you know, having a great time. We're talking about the various initiatives and how I could add value in doing some assessments for them and, and getting them to the next level from a regulatory perspective and, and some other things that, again, all of what I do is, has, it's multifaceted and I have people in my Group, depending on what it is, if, if I don't know how to do whatever it is, I'm able to bring other people on. But I, I love this engagement. So, so we were at lunch and, and we talked about everything. And so we were done and they asked me about the pricing and how much it would cost for this particular type of proposal. And so I gave them a figure and the CFO kind of chuckled and he said, oh, well, I'm sure that's negotiable. <laughs> and so I just looked him dead in the eye. It's like, no, it's not negotiable. And I said, well, thank you all for the lunch. And um, I look forward to hearing back from you all tomorrow. 
<laughs> and uh, and they did. They they contacted me the next day and and they had signed the contract. And so knowing your worth and having where you are celebrated and not just tolerated or even like yourself like oh my gosh was it was it too much was it too high was it this or that well part of what you do is you do your research and then you you can see and know where you line up based on other people that are in the industry but some of what i do there's really not benchmarks for some of the different things that i do analytically and so you do whatever God gives you to do. And if people line up with that, great. Or if you want to, to lower something, I'm not saying that you shouldn't adjust pricing, not saying that at all, but you have to know your worth and, and, and stick with that so that you can manifest yourself in the world and put yourself in the world and place yourself in the world in a way that you are valued. Mm, yes. Yes. I feel that so strongly. And I, I see that for myself and for, again, for like a lot of the clients that I work with. Yeah. When we're doing things that you don't find elsewhere, right. There's not necessarily. And when truly when we're in our zone of genius and when we are in right. our own flow, everyone is unique. Right. So right. there might be other people that do something similar, but I know there's not someone that does exactly what I do exactly the way I do it. Right. Similar. Similar is the key and being in flow is the key. And so when they, when they see that and, and when people experience you in your flow and in your zone of genius, then it's like, wow, she's, you know, she's un unstoppable. And there was one particular week, it hasn't happened since then, let me do a little tear. <laughs> but there was one week with all the different people that I was speaking to in various parts of the world in, in different engagements, I, I got called a, um, a genius three times in one week. And so, so that happens to me from time to time with the different things that I'll come up with that were like, wow, that's like so great. Like you're a genius, but, and, um, but who can even say that, you know, right. <laughs> and I'm not bragging. I'm just letting you know, but that particular week I was like, babe, you know, I was telling my husband, we've been married for 30 years. I was like, I got called a genius three times this week. And he's like, well, so like, I already knew that. I'm like, great you know thanks like he didn't celebrate with me he wasn't like oh wow God. really were you he's like well I know that like everybody knows that I'm like everybody doesn't know that <laughs> no you have to celebrate it I'll celebrate with you um you. that's amazing so yeah let's so talk to me a little bit about how you view creativity and this innovation space um because again like you said there aren't a lot of people that are talking about it the way that you're talking about it so mm -hmm. yeah expand on that for me Okay, great, great. Yeah, so one of the things that I do is I redefine words. And ever since, ever since I was little, my husband, he, I think he was crying because he was laughing so hard reading my diary from elementary school. He's like, what are these words? I'm like, these are really big words. These are real words, my dear. These are real words. But having creative thinking and having a creative mind so the one thing that I talk about, even in business, is going back to people's childhood. And that's why I also work with youth and children to have where we cultivate creative thinking. So we are all unique, as you mentioned earlier, and our uniqueness is supposed to be woven together with other people to create all of what's supposed to be out in the world, but there's so many people that go to their grave with their idea because they're not thinking about it in the realm of innovation. And so innovation, imagination, creativity, manifesting, like all of those words all relate to what is down inside of us and why we were placed on this earth. And so I take an approach that looks at all areas of life. I mentioned earlier about element 10, because everyone should have 10 substantial and sustainable streams of income, at least, that they have coming in, looking at also operating in all four areas of the cash flow quadrant, if you so choose. And so, uh, and I'm saying that I'm, as if everyone knows what that is. If you don't, that's something that, that you can look up. Go but I <laughs> Yeah, go, go to the website. You can just Google cash flow quadrant. But, but what I'm saying, Hannah, is I listen to people 
listen to whatever ideas that they have when they have a creativity to cash flow session with me as a group or if it's as individuals. And while they're talking, uh, if you, this is another reference, if you've seen the Queen's Gamut, it's an awesome, awesome movie. If you haven't, then maybe, maybe you should, should, should see it. It's really great. But this is the I reference. Not I have. like watched it. But I'm gonna write it down. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was a, it was a little girl. I'm not gonna give out everything, but she played chess, and so she was in an orphanage, I believe. And at night, they would give them medicine to help them sleep. And I think it, it maybe there were some other things that the medicine was doing. And, and, but what she did was she didn't take them every night. She collected them. And then she would just take like a lot of them all at once. And then she would be able to look up at the ceiling while everyone else is asleep. And she could see the chess pieces moving around and be able to, to know what to do strategy wise the next day when she was going to play someone. Well, I don't take drugs. That's what I say when I tell people that. I don't take drugs. This is just how, how I, I operate. While you're talking, my mind is over, over your head like moving different things around and seeing how you can have various streams of income and various strategies that we can write down in a phased approach to, to launch your business, but not just launch your business, launch your innovations. And so some of that has to do with, if you're, you're working for a, another company, it could be that they, they have the IP over whatever it is that you've created, but I always talk to people about having your own company. So when I say build that biz, even if you're working for someone, you should, and, and you're okay with being an employee, you should also have where you have your own company. And some people are like, well, I don't know what the company name would be. Well, it's crystalrichardson.com. Just make it that <laughs> right now. Because some of what is going on when you have a boss that's telling you to do something or asking you a question First of all, you should always be able to go back to them with at least three solutions. And that came from my mom and dad. My, my dad would not allow me to ask him a question if I didn't have maybe some suggestions on how to, to solve whatever it was. So, so they groomed me from that perspective and, and groomed us to be uh, entrepreneurs. Like we were kidpreneurs. We had we shoveled snow, we raked leaves, we painted houses, we had a paper route, my brother and I, like we were doing, we were doing the most when we were little, but we had, we had money <laughs> right. from all yeah. of our different little jobs. And so all of those things Hannah, are, are ones that if we look back at our childhood and figure out, okay, maybe you didn't have that kind of childhood, but it's okay because you do need to understand what happened then and in your youth and in your young adult years to help you to get back to what I was talking about, about behaviors, to know why you think the way you think, mm -hmm. why you believe what you believe. And based on where you were born and based on what your religious beliefs are and based on the different things that are happening you know, in, in your neighborhood, like all of these things affect how you're able to be creative. And so I talk to people about having their, their one place where they can do their creative thinking. And because everyone doesn't have where they have a nice plush office or that they can be out on the beach and hear the waves crashing in the birds. I can hear the birds now and the sun's coming down and, and, and you know, they, the sun rays, you know, they, they can't have that. So it might be for a mom that their creative zone is in the bathroom. That's the one time that they can go in there. Sometimes the child is still in there, but that's the one place you can go and close the door. Hopefully nobody you know, has anything happen while you're in there. But even if it's five minutes, I talk to women about you know, your five minutes of creativity. For me, sometimes it's, I'm actually in my car uh, driving down the street and, and, and I'll have, I have a Miata, so I'll have the top down and you know, I'm just like, enjoying life and the music is on and then I'll have this creative thing that happens and I have to pull over, write something down. I'm, I'm a writer. I do type things into my phone, but I like to write. Me too. Or I get home and I pull in the garage and I just sit there and then the light goes out and I'm just sitting in the dark. And sometimes my husband, he'll come out. He's like, really? Like <laughs> you're still out here because he'll hear the garage door go up, but and then never hear me come into the house. But whatever your creative zone is, and I talk about the three o'clock more, uh, the three o'clock time frame, three a.m. There's a lot, and I'm probably going to write a book about it. 
the two, three, four o'clock time frame where there's so many downloads that, that you have a lot of times in the middle of the night, if you're in a creative season of your life. So you should have your phone, you should have a notepad or something by your bed every single night. And if you've never done it from this day forward, whoever's listening to this, you need to have that because there's so many things that only come once. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can, can figure it out, but I've had a number of things, songs, uh, formulas, a marketing strategy, like all different kinds of things that have come. And, and, and I'll say it to, I'll wake up and sometimes I'll say it to myself five times out loud. And, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll remember it when I get up. I don't have to write it down. I'm like, shucks, I should have <laughs> written it down. I don't remember. It's like, please, God, please, Jesus, please. <laughs> Let me bring remember. Back, and then so sometimes I will remember it to write it down. I'm like, yes, oh my gosh. It's like, whoo, I'm not going to do that again. And then sometimes I do just lay there. But it's, it's one of those things people say, you know, don't smoke, but then they smoke. So sometimes I say, you know, write it down. And sometimes <laughs> I don't get up to write it down. But it's hard. Like, you know, I've, I've had that with, I have a I have presentations coming up where like yeah. downloads are coming of like parts of the speech. Right. And I'll be like, I'll remember that. Like, no, no, no. Write, write it down. Right, um, right, or right. even when you like go to write it and you're like, oh, wait, where did it go? <laughs> Right, right. Like, come on. Yeah, so my, my husband calls me the list lady because I have, you know, lists everywhere. I have my notebooks, but I have like little pieces of paper for different things that I'll post depending on what it is I need to remember. And so what I help people with related to wealth is it's, it's the, just a three-part formula, which is think, disrupt, lead. Think, disrupt, lead. So we have to think about what we're thinking about. And Napoleon Hill talks about, you know, you have to have a burning desire and, and talks a lot about our, our thoughts, mm -hmm. uh, but we have to also be able to go to that area of disruption, the area of disruption. So some things you can't just, you can't just like ease into it because if it's a really big thought or something that you don't even know is big, you won't know until you start doing some research. And there's ways to do that too, where it, it doesn't end up being something that someone else finds or steals. But there's, you need to be where you're in a mind. We all need to be in a mind of disruption. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about someone who is trying to kick, kick a habit, for instance, sometimes you can ease into it, but sometimes you just need to go cold turkey and stop whatever that thing is that, that you're doing. So, so that is disruption. And if we have where we can trigger our mind to be in disruption and relate it to our wealth, wealth profile and our wealth index, it is easier for us to then be able to lead the market or lead in our business or lead as a worker in someone else's company because we're able to think, go to disruption and lead. Mm, can you give me um, like, an, like a, for instance, on that, because I think it's beautiful. And I think there's also um, like, what do you mean disruption? Like, what, what does that look like in like a, like an actual example? Yeah, so what I'm doing right now with this one doctor uh, is he is, and this is not giving away anything that's proprietary, but it's just talking about skin cancer recognition and diagnosis. And so there are ways to, to do that because there's already people that are recognizing skin cancer, there are already obviously people that diagnose skin cancer, right? So those are things that are already happening. So if you want to break into that market, quote unquote, of being someone else that's doing that, then it's, it's where you can just be a same, meaning it's, it's basically similar and same to what's going on out there right now, or you can disrupt by having your creative thinking and your innovation uh, sessions and have where you look at it a totally different way. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something a little bit analytical, but it's, it's, really, it's really not. I'm going to explain about medical devices. So in medical devices, when you come out with, let's say a heart catheter, if your heart, so there's already heart, heart, heart catheters out there, right? And so there's a term called substantially equivalent. Mm -hmm. If what you're doing is substantially equivalent or almost the same as something else that's already out there, there's a particular type of submission you do to the FDA. 
But if yours is so new and novel, it has all these bells and whistles, you wouldn't have bells and whistles on a heart catheter, I know. But if there's all these new types of technology that you have related to that, then you have to do a more extensive registration with the FDA. That, that's disruptive because it's something that's not out there and it's something that only you and your company have thought of. So you have to do a, a, a more extensive application. However, if everything works out, you're going to reap a larger reward because yours is, is so new and novel. Mm -hmm. And so when I say disruption, it's how you look at something or how you create something that it's it's a mousetrap, but it's like, wow, this is really great. And it, it's still low cost. It's still functional. It can't be that it's so wow that it costs you 50 times more to make because no one's going to buy it. Right. So it, there's a lot of factors in that, but it's that wow factor, taking your mind to that zone of creation and innovation where you can have that wow factor that still has where it's relatable to people. They still want to buy it and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. And there's a lot of companies, I mean, you know, Uber and, you know, there's a number of different companies that have actually done that where it's something that's so simple, but, you know, we've always had taxis, but now we're doing our transportation a totally different way. So tell me, two things came up uh, while you were, while you were talking about that, that um, I, I want to explore a little bit more. How do you get into that creative zone? We talked about this a little bit and I want, I want you to, I want you to share some of the cool things that you do, um, because that analytical space, right? I mean, we can get so data driven and we can get so like feature benefit, you know, like, and just like detail everything out until you're like, okay, that just looks, you know great, fine. That's fine. But what's different about it? What's, where's the creativity in that? So when you're in your analytical mind so much, how do you break out and give yourself that space for creativity? Tell us a little bit how you do that. Yeah. So I am not, <laughs> I want to say this on camera. I am not normal. <laughs> <laughs> from that regard, because people ask me this question all the time. And it's like, well, the way I, I answer this is not necessarily the same for, for how other people do it. And so I have my students actually go through exercises to, to, to determine how they get into their creative zone. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm, I'm, I'm there and, and I stay there. And so sometimes depending on what it is that I'm thinking about, like I said, writing for me is key as well as saying things out loud. So anything, you know, a lot of people talk about various ways to learn. And, I, and for me, when I say think disruptly, we need to have the thought, we need to say it out loud, mm -hmm. we need to write it down, and then we need to also go into looking at only two to three things related to how we can explore it further because you, you don't wanna overwhelm your, your brain. And so for me, it's a matter of the thinking it, saying out loud, the writing it, but then when I say it, even the saying of it has to be in a creative way. So mm -hmm. disruption in skin cancer, like disrupting transportation, or even when we're talking about affirmations, like I am confident, I am this, I am, I am confident. So having that energy behind it is, is one of the things that puts me into and keeps me in the creative zone because I'm always moving my hands. Remember I said creativity to cash flow. I'm always putting motion and inflections in my voice related to what I'm doing. And this is in business. This is not just because I'm about to choreograph a dance or write a song. Like this, this, is, this is related to business. So even in business, I have where there's various business songs I've, I've written about SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat, and failure modes, effects analysis. Like I have songs about those and about, and I have my own opening song when I come on stage various places. So it, it's, it's, it's having where 
you just stay in it. it. It's once you get there, you stay in it. And part of the same thing I'm saying about me not being normal is some people, when they when they see the different times that are on emails from me, they're like, do you ever sleep? So the genius thing was something I mentioned to you, but people even more so, do you ever sleep? Because I'll be up if I'm in, if my brain is going, I cannot turn it off. Like I have to get out whatever it is that I have to get out. And then if I have to get up three hours later or an hour later, because I'm in that zone, then I just continue. It totally messes up your sleep pattern, which is bad for you, you know, from a health perspective. I know that, but I have to get it out. And so being a creative being of which we all are, I truly, truly, truly believe is that you have to find what works best for you. Mm -hmm. And my husband's dead asleep. He's snoring. He's getting his eight hours, (laughs) 8.5 hours. And the next morning he'll wake up and I'll be like, can you proofread this book for me before I send it to the editor? He's like, wait, what? (laughs) Like, can you look at this or do that you know and so because I've created something in the in the middle of, oh, I'm about to send this logo or, or send this 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 application out to blah 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 or you know this video you know so I'll, I'll show him different things and he's like you know, he'll, he'll he'll give me his his opinion because he actually he's really good so what he's good at is he's like the the fixer or the the suggester and mm-hmm. and he has a lot of creation on helping to to make whatever it is better. So, yeah. so yes, yeah, so we, we kind of have that, we kind of have that little, little groove thing going on there. So I don't know if I really actually answered your question, but it, it's really a difficult one that I get asked all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, that I think is a, like literally what you just did was like, give me permission to like get up and, and write things when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Cause I, I will do the same. There are, there are times when I'm totally fine and like going to sleep is no problem. And there are other times where, and I can feel the difference right between if it's not anxiety, it's not like, like rumination, it's ideas, right? I, I can feel that difference. And when I'm trying to like, no, let's just go to sleep. Let's just leave that for later. And it's like, nope, 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 nope. You know, that's that permission to be like, you know what? just get up and get it out. And then you can rest. <laughs> you yeah, will my rest body tells out. Me. yeah. My body tells me when I, when I need to rest, like I didn't get it that night, but you know, I I'll get it the next day. Or sometimes if it, depending on how, how my client schedule is, I'll just call people or text them. I don't call them. I'll text them or email them. I'll be in this afternoon. And so I'll just rest for the whole rest of the morning and then go in, in the afternoon or uh, on the weekend, because I, I, I work basically not 24 seven, but that's what they talk about entrepreneurs, right? You, you leave a nine to five job working <laughs> three hours a week to work, you know, like 40 hours a day. There's not even 40 hours in a day, but, okay. but, you know, we, that, that's what we do. And so that was one of my posts, like, you know, you, you work wherever you need to work, you do whatever you need to do in the airport, in the bathroom, in the, wherever you are, you just do what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we need to hear that though, because people who are like highly creative in nature, that Mm -hmm. is like the ideas are just always flowing. And there are so many messages that tell us to, to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Right. And in whatever way, and it, rather than integrating it into your life Mm -hmm. and, and reading it that way. Yeah. And so that's why I do something that's called a spider diagram and it's putting people's ideas all together in one spot so that they can be overwhelmed to see like all the different things that they've already created and then things that they can create based on what they've already created so that they can go wow and then we can step back and we can get do a phased approach on it and break it down by quarter and by year by quarter and then by month and then you know by by week and because everything is not meant to be done right away but you have to capture those ideas because and then say them out loud because Mm -hmm. guess what depending on what you're thinking about and saying, it could be that very next week you go to a conference and you, you're talking to someone or you hear someone talking and they're saying something where they can use that sixth idea that you have on your spider diagram. And depending on 
what conversation you get into, mm -hmm. it might be that that gets moved up because you can maybe monetize it right away or at least get into discussions to have that be on a two, three year plan, but it was already on your list. So it's important to write these things down, important to say them out loud so that it can get into, into you know, your, your subconscious. And then when you hear someone say something, you recognize it because it's on your list. I'm, I'm very, what is it called? Photo, I have like the photographic, photographic memory. memory. I think yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say photogenic, but I mean, maybe I am photogenic, but yes, that was also correct. that. <laughs> but so, so I can see where it is on the paper. I can see what page it's on. I can see that I know that I, I underlined three things over here. I had a highlight over here. I can see that. So in your subconscious, if you have a view every single day of of what you've written down and you put a copy on your refrigerator, you put it in your room, in your bathroom, in your car, not to be reading and driving and running into a pole. But the thing okay. is to <laughs> have, that, have that vision of it. Mm -hmm. You will be able to hear something and then maybe go to that, come back and have a meeting with me or whoever, you know, one of my other advisors are and we'll, we'll talk about whether it should be moved up or not because you don't wanna be like all over the place, but you do want to take advantage of opportunity. So it is totally being opportunistic mm -hmm. and it is related to maybe that's something that, that needs to move up. Maybe it's not, but maybe it is. And so you're always in the mode of reviewing, writing, reviewing, and rinsing and repeating that, that process of the think, disrupt, and lead because sometimes the timing is not going to come back around. Remember I said, sometimes you'll think of things in the middle of the night and they won't yep. come back again. Yep. Sometimes the person that you've met might be multimillionaire, might be somebody who was like already right there, ready to grasp that. Mm -hmm. And you can have that business venture right then. So right. It's, it's helping people not to be all over the place, but having where you have all of it understood and written down. And then you can, you can, just do the jockeying as, as you need to do it. Oh, the, what just came to me was awareness, right? Like mm -hmm. keeping it in your awareness mm -hmm. without creating stress about it. Right. right. So it, it's like, it's like the permission to you are here. Here's my, here's my diagram. You are right here. I will not forget about you. Mm -hmm. And when the time is right, you know, rather than a, than a one through 10 list, it's, it's just almost like a sphere, right? And you just pull, pull the things into the center when, they, when they're ready to come in. Right, and so I do have where I have, you know, people do their, their top three things and, and have where we, we do a more of a deep dive on some of those. Mm -hmm. but, but quite frankly, part of what happens is that a lot of people, as I said, when we first came on, is that they just they just put to the side, oh, well, this is nothing. Well, maybe it is something. And to have only like 16.5% of the inventors to be women is, is something that I think is just an atrocity because you know women are thinking about things and creating things all the time uh, in their mind or in their home, you know, and 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 not taking advantage of it, of taking the next step to to actually get a patent for it. And then there's also like 200 and 64 million people, I believe, worldwide that suffer from and have been diagnosed with anxiety and depression disorders. And so a lot of that is just because they have not stepped into who they are supposed to be. They have not stepped into their flow. They have not stepped into their creative genius. And so you get depressed, you wake up every day and it's like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I, I'm an E, you know, I'm an employee on the cash flow quadrant and I just have to go and do, or I'm not even an employee. I don't even have a job, but do you even have to have a job? Part of it is maybe you're supposed to be operating in your genius. And so that's what I really love. I'm working with this guy right now um, and he is doing his initial studies real, with me related to being a voiceover artist because there's tons of people with all of the mass media things that we do, they need people to do voiceovers, whether it's a commercial, whether it's their online course, whether it's an introduction at a, a Rolex Awards, like the other voiceover guy I have, you know, trained with, trained him and brought him up. You know, people need you. And so he has a very, very extremely voice and, and uh, extremely nice voice. And people will be hearing more from him or hearing from him because he hasn't done anything yet. 
except for the commercials that he's done for me as part of his assignments. And so I can't wait to, to launch him. Cool. Well, I am going to invite us to, to wrap up our conversation a little bit here. And I want you to tell us what it is that you want to share um, the most, it, how, how people can reach you, how you love to connect with people. So, you know, you've shared so much of your heart with me. Thank you so much. And now I want to know how can other people get to you when they see, they hear your words and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to talk to her. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And I really appreciated this time. It didn't, didn't necessarily seem like an interview, it just seemed like a conversation we were having like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. So yeah, you can just get in contact with me, crystalrichardson.com. And that is K-R-Y-S-T-Y-L-L-E richardson.com. I'll spell that one more time. My parents were unique also with the, the spelling of my name. And somebody did ask me, well, wh how old were you when you changed your name to that spelling? I'm like, as if my parents <laughs> did not have done that. I'm like, I did not. I, I came out of the womb with that name. <laughs> so K-R-Y-S-T-Y-L-L-E richardson.com is how you can get in touch with me. And I want to just say something related to celebrating women on today. Mm -hmm. And and just say, you know, ladies, you are powerful, you are beautiful, you have so much that sometimes we just keep inside that really needs to get out for the world to see. We are disruptors, we are, we are power, we are love, we have brains, we, we have confidence that sometimes we just need to tap into. And so I want to, to invite you all to come to our powerful women's summit uh, that we're having uh, in September. And even beyond that, we have where we have a Women of Impact and Innovation International group. And these women, oh my gosh, so impactful from all over the world that are coming together to pour into the next generation of women leaders. So what we do there is we honor women, but we also have ambassador boards where people can get involved, people, they are people, but women. Women can get involved, whether you're in, in investing or real estate or NFT, crypto, mindset, leadership, entrepreneurship. There's all of these different ambassador boards that we're putting together where we will be able to really, really, really go out and have an impact internationally related to creativity and innovation. And everyone is on fire and we, we get things done fast, okay? So we, we put things together, we decide what it is we're going to do and we do it. And so we have plans for 2022, 2023 and beyond. And that is womenoiii.com if you're interested in looking at that. Again, it's womenoiii.com. And all I would like to end with is keep rising. Mm. I receive all of that and I'm sure everyone watching does too. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to keep continuing the conversation with you. I'm excited as well. This has been great. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. if you liked anything that we talked about, make sure that you check the show notes go check out Crystal's website and Women of Impact International um, and like, subscribe and share if this resonates for you and you know it'll resonate with other women um, in your circle, share it and let's, let's keep rising together. So thank you everyone. See you next time. Thank you.